Good morning, folks. We've got top science news, a full analysis of the CME headed at Earth. Happy news, sad news, and we're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on our star brought the small coronal holes towards center disk. Solar wind and solar flaring are quiet. The sunspots really haven't developed or decayed too much, but they are small and not very active. The CME we mentioned is from the northern filament. It came in behind the coronal hole. Yesterday erupted a halo CME. Halo because it looks like a faint circle emerging around the central blocking disk. That means it's headed this way. And on stereo A with Earth off to the right, we see the eruption does span geo-effective latitudes. NASA's Enlil Spiral is updated to show the impact coming late on the 26th or early on the 27th. It's going to be a direct hit but it is not very dense or moving quickly. Expect minor geomagnetic storms at most. There was another eruption this morning, but it was a filament off the far side, and the CME is visible in the last frames of SOHO. Folks, that CME is vastly greater than the one coming at Earth, but it is still not at scary levels. Top quake of the last day was a six-pointer in Russia. Luckily, those islands take big ones regularly and are of relatively low population. And we're on to our bit of happy news. I waited like a child for the numbers to tick over yesterday. You are all super awesome. Thank you so much. It's been a very fun ride and tank ain't on empty just yet. So let's go to the sun and the solar wind, where scientists picked their jaws up off the floor to realize the solar wind could be the single greatest motor of the lunar surface, especially in the breakdown of material and formation of nano iron particles. It's a ways away from the elemental delivery in the solar wind, but it's a step towards right when you take meteoritic forcing down a peg where it belongs. Folks, I missed this one earlier in this year, but better late than never. Ben Clovian, the lead author, was just featured in our geomagnetic extinction letter, and here we see the studies push forward with all the major space weather health forcing factors identified. Solar flares, geomagnetic storms, proton storms, and KP0 days, cosmic ray health alerts. Awesome study up next for a few reasons. First, because they keep spotting nova remnants in plain sight. They keep finding different pre- and post-nova conditions. They track this one to its remnant cloud, and based on its speed, it has to have occurred about 12,000 years ago. When that cuts the original estimate of over 100,000 years old, it's like the Tibetan ice cap redating story, just this time in space. And our bit of sad news. Folks, we had moved stores a couple months ago trying to avoid what's happening now, but it's happened. If you heard about Colorado's internet tax laws killing small businesses, it's killing our store. The future is anyone's guess, but for now we have no choice but to close the store like thousands of other Colorado small businesses. No more books, hats, shirts, etc. If you want any of the books or the gear, the store is going away this week, maybe even tonight. The PDFs of our textbook and the next end of the world will remain up since it's only physical items the tax laws attack, and the Observer Ranch founder rewards will remain up as well. Sharing these books with you has been one of the great honors of my life, and while I say it every day, today I hope the desperation is well veiled in the tones when I say that we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.